In this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that I know about creating a beautiful frame for your interviews. Look at that, how dramatic. We're gonna turn this living room in to an interview set. One thing that I wish that I knew sooner was to take my time and come earlier to the space and to find a position, an angle with a lot of depth. The depth is important because when you get in the space and find out where you're gonna shoot, you need to see how much of a distance you have between the camera and the subject. So keep that in mind when you choose your lens. I particularly love the 50 because it's a middle range, but if I could have the chance and if I have the depth in the room, I would always go for the 85, 1.4. Now that we know what the space look like, walk a little bit more in the space and see where would be a good angle. So try to check with your client to see if you are able to arrange things and move some furnitures around. That's gonna help a lot. The key light always needs to be motivated for the window. And that was something that I was like, hmm. As much as I knew the skills and had the tools, it wasn't perfect to my eyes. I didn't know what I was missing. And after when I was editing that footage, it was beautiful, but it wasn't natural. But I didn't understand why it wasn't natural. Hmm. A big piece for that was to learn that my window or the light that I have available in the space motivates the key light or the hair light. And one of the reasons that I was acting like that was because I didn't know what I was doing. That's number one. And number two, I was always under pressure. So if you can memorize and practice these skills, it's gonna help you a lot and save you some time during the day of the shoot. Turn on the lights. That's very, very important. We don't want the color temperatures being changed or like we have to adjust later in the post-production. That's not fun. From this point of view, it's gonna be nice because we already have some guiding lines from that window over there. And that's why it's nice to observe the space and see where is the best space to actually position your subject and where is gonna be our key light. So the key light's gonna be on the right side of the frame because the window is on that side and automatically it's gonna be just very realistic, very natural. So when I learned that, everything came together. I have the FX3, I put a 50 mil because here I don't have too much depth, 50 mil or a little bit more like 70 to 200 or 85. I like to be in that range because it's very natural. The compression is very beautiful and just doesn't have any distortion, but doesn't mean that you cannot go for a 35 mil or like a 24 mil, a beautiful, nice establishing shot as well. It's very nice and looks beautiful. It depends on the space, of course. And specifically because my XLR is a little bit too short. I'm trying to do a test and use the Zayum, the G200, because another very important thing, as you progress on the filmmaking career, you will see that not necessarily a bunch of small lights gonna get the job done. One powerful light, way better than five small lights. Especially for interviews, for corporation stuff, if you wanna compensate for the light coming outside, we want to be able to expose for that. And that's why I feel like in movies and in documentaries, we are able to see the full frame. It's very well composed and exposed. And that's why we need a powerful key light to compensate for the outside lighting that's coming in. So we want to make sure that we can see everything in the frame. So that's a very important thing that took me years to learn. So that's not a powerful tool because we want to be able to use a lower f-stop to blur that background as much as we can, especially if we don't have a pleasing space, which is very often, nah. That's why we need a powerful key light. Doesn't mean that this is the perfect one, no, because that is probably like a 300, it would be even better than this. But for my needs now, because I'm traveling more and I want to bring a compact one, so that's why we have here, Potentially I can make a video on this light too. We need a big soft box like this because we want the light to be extremely soft. I'm gonna bring the ISO down, F-stop up. Can you see how the shadow is falling? If I move this side, 
Look how soft, how nice this is. You can do it in so many different ways. I'm planning to do a video on that too, because even with shower curtains, with blankets, with so many different options and cheap options, you're able to have an amazing result. So you don't need this fancy, expensive, soft box with this grid, but it helps. It's just easier, right? And it's not gonna be bouncing all over the place. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, your key light's not gonna work on the day of your interview. So now we have the key light, boom, way brighter. I'm gonna just, the key light here is 5,600 and I'm gonna change my white balance here for the same thing. It's a little bit too yellow for me because of that orange, but we're gonna fix that. So now my F is 1.8 and looks good. We are still exposed for the outside. So that's the goal. If I cannot expose perfectly, we're gonna use an ND filter. I'm gonna be sitting right here on this side. Mm. Very bright. Oh, that's good. Because usually I had a 60 watts light. It's not very powerful, but this looks great. Because I'm sitting here on the third, we always gonna shoot on the shadow side. So everything needs to align. For example, key light, key light, shadow side. Doesn't mean that you cannot sit right that center, position the light, you can do that too. But I would say stay right here, looking a little bit in passing the camera, we can do a little bit more of work here. And one thing that you find out in this part of the video is because I was shooting everything by myself. I was prepping my gear, I was testing some new lights, and I didn't actually set up a monitor. So I highly recommend you, if you have the option, if you're shooting everything by yourself, try to set up a monitor to see everything that's gonna be in frame. In my case, I had the camera, just flip the screen for my FX3, but I have this thing here from Peak Design on the side and I was not able to see the full screen from afar. And you're gonna find a little surprise on the side, on the on this side here. We're just getting started. After we have the key light, it's gonna be a hair light. That is gonna help us to detach our subject or person from the background, create that 3D look. Because now it's a bit flat, but let's do that. For the key light, the key light, no. This used to be my key light, but it's not bright enough. So now this is the backlight, Forza 60B, and with a little directional, bring back here, ping. Clearly too bright, fan off, so we can use 30%, bring that down. Let's see how this is going to look. Oh yeah, now we can see all that light coming, that wrapping, looks pretty. Pretty good, but it's too bright for me. As a hair light, I like to keep just a little bit, and we will take care of this background in just a bit. And you can see that my frame doesn't have distractions. I mean, that is a lot of distractions, but we will be able to remove that later, like that plant coming out of my head. We don't want that. So this is gonna be the before and after. Looks way better, that's for sure. And I always like to give a little bit of breathing room here, just in case I wanted to position or reframe, or I can even sit a little bit more here. After the key and the hair light, we go for the back one, which is very fun. I enjoy it a lot because it's most about contract, contract, contrast. Let's change this background here because this tree, it's not nice. We don't want things coming out of the person's head. Maybe here. I don't think it's gonna be in frame. Okay, here, here I'm in frame. And then you just parkour, it could work. For example, to create contrast in this image right now, we have a little bit of dark, a little bit of bright, and then we come the subject, and then bright, and then dark. So creating this in your frame and adjusting the position for that, it's very important. And you can see that mine is in the dark area. If I position myself even here, if I was talking to the interview style on the third, it would be even better. Or if I was sitting on the other side, because I'm dark, this is gonna be brighter, but one thing that's not gonna work very nice is because the key light is in the same side of the way that we are shooting. So we had to flip the key for this side. I kind of like that, but then my skin tone doesn't really make it pop because you can see that there is a light on the back there, which I have a little remote for it. So let's see how it looks off. So this would be without that orange look that I was telling in the beginning. It's a little bit too yellow for me because of that orange, but we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna leave it off. Complementary colors 
That's something very important. For that scene, it was nice because of my skin tones. If I put that light on the back orange as well, it would just not create that contrast that we just talked about. So if you can, ask photos of your clients, who you're gonna be interviewing. See if they are able to bring two to three shirts and try to avoid the white one because with a powerful key light, it's a little bit hard to expose or to push that back later. There is too much orange, right? Where here, the contrast is there. So for now, I'm gonna put a little bit more of light on that background just to make it us pop a little bit more. Parkour. I should bring a camera. Parkour. I have a Pivo tube. 5,600. That's nice. Much better. Let me know what you think. I think I prefer this look. And this side of the image here is a little bit dark as well. I think we can put another one here. Let's put another light there to show you that doesn't really need to be like fancy stuff. I'm just gonna literally bounce on that wall. This is orange. Shall we see how that looks? Mm, no. And that's the thing. That is a lot of like freedom that you can experiment. And it's always cool to be able to come earlier. I usually one hour because it's important. Now that you have everything set up, the client just walk in, sit, boom, done. Okay. I like that. We're gonna go for the sound. I have my Rode NTG5, amazing. That's the moment that I was telling right in the beginning to get a, a longer XLR cord because you never know how distant you're gonna be able to do. 50 mil is great, but if I wanna do an 85, even more compression definitely would not work. Put on the opposite side of the key because if we put it on the key side, it's gonna get shadow in our face. And that's not what we want for our final product. There we go, let's bring this up. Just a little bit out of frame, right? There, the ideal is positioned to our mouth. And even if it's on the frame, you can always remove. Grab a frame of the shot and then remove in Photoshop. It's pretty easy to do now as well. Audio is key, especially for the interview. Some people use two as a backup, one wireless and one Shotgun. After you have all these beautiful lightings and setups, a big important piece is a good sound. And for me, I use Epidemic Sound. That's the platform that I use that I highly recommend. And if you wanna sign up, links for you down below as well. I'll be right there beside the camera, monitoring the focus, the sound with the headphones. And that's where I ask the questions or if I have an assistant, even better. And I think that's pretty, Solid to me. You'll be able to hear from this microphone as well because we have this one running on that one and this one is gonna be running on my FX3. Two camera setups. It's a little bit more advanced, a little bit fancier, but we can utilize as well the closest one to mount the mic. I like the shotgun microphone better, but the two angles is something that I like a lot. And if you wanna learn more about it, let me know in the comment down below. I'll be happy to make a video on this topic as well. This is very nice, but I'm gonna add one more touch. I feel like haze adds so much to the scene, to the contrast, to the mood, and it's just so nice. And super compact. I've never seen anything like this in my life before. Amazing. I never had the interest to get a big smoke machine, but this one is great. Thank you very much, PMI, for sending me to have a look on this one. Now that we add the haze, <laughs> see how fast that one? Just went a little bit. So there we go, that's the key. After that, here, especially with the haze, now we can see a little bit more of that presence as well. Back around with the tube, I thought that this would be a little bit too dark, so then we introduce another one. Look at that, how dramatic. Next level. Thank you very much for watching this video. This is my process. I hope that you can learn a lot and apply for your next interview. And don't forget to subscribe, otherwise you already know. Good luck on your next interview without a key light. <laughs>